Welcome back to the channel. We've got the Max ECU Mini here, and I'm gonna show you how we're going to use that to connect in parallel with a factory ECU. So uh, let's take a little deeper dive. We'll hold off on the adapter for a minute, and we're just gonna take a little deeper dive into the wiring on the Max ECU Mini. So right now we're just gonna focus on the wiring harness and what it comes with. So let me uh, just set these guys to the side and we'll take a closer look here. So with a lot of ECUs, it is common to be able to buy what they call a flying lead harness. So that means that you have the connector, the wires are crimped and inserted and, and mated to the connector so that it's ready to use. You can plug it into the ECU and these are all connected as well as most of the time uh, the wires are labeled and they have a bunch of different color coordination. So let me get some cutters and I'll show you kind of how that works. Be very careful not to cut any of the wires on this, but we gotta take the zip ties off here that hold it together so nice and then it's gonna fly into pieces for me. But there's only a few uh, wires in here that we're actually gonna use to control the engine. Um, that's one of the joys, I think, of starting with something simple like the Max ECU is it doesn't get overwhelming. Um, there are many, many things you can do with more inputs and outputs, but for someone who's just trying to get an engine running and enjoy the benefits of being able to tune the engine or learn how to tune, you don't need much. And that's kind of what I want to highlight with the Max ECU uh, Mini on this one. Um, so. First off, you got this big coil of wires, and it's labeled right here, Max ECU Mini, and you can just go through them, as well as there's a table that you can see that shows you what each one of these are. So if you look close, it'll say analog in, or right here it'll say injector cylinder four, injector cylinder three. So you can start to see, oh, okay, those are the groups of injector wires. and. There's only four outputs on this for injectors, and then you'll start to see other bigger ones, which are usually your powers. So this is your engine ground, which goes to the intake manifold. And if you're wiring in parallel to the stock ECU, you wanna make sure that this is grounded to the same location that the factory ECU is. Um, that will guarantee that you have the right uh, voltage offset with the rest of the power plane. And then there's your uh, outputs, your GP out, injector, there's another one, um, GP out, ignition out, GP out, and so on and so forth. So ignition, and then this one right here is actually shielded. So it's basically like a microphone cable. It shields from uh, electromagnet magnetic frequencies that are just out in the open or induced by other things in an engine compartment and it keeps there from being noise on this because this is the crank trigger signal and this is the most crucial signal of all of them. You want this to be absolutely free of any noise that gets induced by anything spinning or high voltage around it in uh, the engine bay. So anyway, we could go through all of these, but another thing we can do is we can just look at the wiring diagram. And every Max ECU has one of these diagrams. A lot of other ECUs provide them as well. But what's nice about these is they show you everything nice and labeled. They show you what color it is and what it goes to. So there are a lot of sensors on an ECU that are dedicated to a specific purpose. That way in software, when you open it up, if as long as you've connected like the coolant temp sensor, it's already on the right channel and it sees that information for the coolant temp sensor. Uh, you can also, with the Max ECU or a lot of other ECUs, you can custom set each of these inputs to anything you want. Um, but for this purpose, there are specific uses that we can, we can use. So up at the top, um, so let's see, yeah, up at the top we have throttle position sensor, intake, coolant, and then five volt, uh, zero to five volt analog inputs. Then there's just your crank trigger, or sorry, your digital inputs, 
which can be used as a home signal if it's a Hall effect sensor. Um, I'm doing a six cylinder, so I don't have enough uh, injector and ignition outputs to run sequential anyway, so we're not gonna worry about those. All we need is the trigger, the, the crank trigger signal, and then hook everything else up. So with what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, there's really only a few wires that we actually need. If I count them up, I think it was 16 or 17, but basically we need power, ground, that will supply power to the ECU, and then a crank trigger is necessary, and then on uh, the sensors, coolant, intake, air temperature, and throttle position are necessary, and then we hook up the ignition coils, they're in batch fire, so we have cylinder one, cylinder two, and cylinder three each have two cylinders on a batch fire. Um, and then same with injectors, we're gonna pair them with two cylinders each. So one, two, and three outputs are each gonna have two cylinders to make up a total of six. Uh, the factory ECU is already controlling the tachometer and the fuel pump. So a lot of the times you would use these extra outputs as a fuel pump trigger or a tachometer. What's nice about that is that just opens up some of the outputs for us to use uh, for other purposes. So say you had a boost controller or you wanted to do an external fan or a nitrous solenoid or something like that, all that is there for you to use. So you can plan ahead and say, okay, we're gonna allot these for different purposes. Uh, for my use case, I, I, I'm not using a lot of outputs because I'm tying into a factory ECU, which is already running a lot of those things like idle control and things like that that would eat up some of your outputs. I already have that taken care of by the factory ECU that I'm running parallel with this. Uh, CAN bus is gonna be important. We're gonna connect some other stuff with CAN bus, including the, uh, the air fuel ratio sensor. It's gonna be hooked up over the CAN bus network. So we're gonna have to pull that out separately. And what's cool is like you can see the white and the pink, uh, they're already set up right here and that is the CAN network. So if you just follow the, the diagram, decide what you want, and then you go and open the uh, wiring harness, you're gonna be able to find it. Thankfully, it's all nice and labeled, like right here, air temp sensor. You can see it written there. You just grab that with your sensor ground and go hook up your air temp sensor. Uh, like this, this is a typical GM LS style coolant temp sensor. There's just two pins. One gets sensor ground and one gets the coolant temperature output that uh, you would find in your wiring harness. So right there, there's your coolant temp sensor, just gets that and then the uh, sensor ground. So uh, I just want this to, I, I want people that haven't, haven't used something like this before to, uh, to not be intimidated. It really is kind of straightforward. Uh, if you hook everything up that's in the diagram to the correct spots on the engine, most of the time without any problems, you can run it and um, it'll give you some information about which types of coils and uh, wiring polarities and things like that and the typical relay wiring that you should run, how much amperage you should give the ECU uh, from the ignition and from the ECU power, different things like that, how typical uh, VR sensors and optical sensors are wired. So if you just follow these, it's one of the easiest ways to keep everything straight. And what's nice too is if you have this with you while you're wiring on the bench, uh, you know, sometimes it is nice to just have a physical copy because you can go through and you can say, okay, I checked off my coolant temp sensor. I've got my crank trigger, my crank trigger ground and my shield wired. You can just go through and make sure everything's here and have it right in front of you while you're working on the bench. This is gonna come in handy because I have a lot of wires to deal with on my adapter. So let me get this out of the way just for a second and I'll show you kind of how this works. So this is the factory ECU plug. These are all the plugs that go into the ECU from the wiring harness on my Toyota 5VZ. So these plug into the ECU and on the other end, I plug in the factory wiring harness. And so basically this allows signals to pass through and or if you solder in 
uh, if you solder in on that same pin that it goes to, you can intercept that signal. Or in my case, where I'm trying to take over the ignition signal and the injector signals, uh, I would just leave out, like on this one, you can see I've marked these with Sharpie, I would just leave out where I'm going to be connecting those injectors to the factory ECU. So instead of the factory ECU having any of them connected, I'm just going to connect them here on this board and and connect them out into the factory ECU harness. So this will go out into the engine bay. And so the Max ECU Mini, I'll take the connections that I need, solder them on, it connects me through into the factory EC or factory wiring harness, and I don't have to splice or cut up the factory ECU harness at all. Uh, that's the benefit of doing this. There's a lot of different companies that sell something similar. This isn't new. This isn't something I just made up. I'm just doing what is kind of industry standard for a parallel ECU or a uh, wiring adapter. Because there's a lot of uh, ECUs that you don't need to run anything from the stock uh, ECU at all. But being that this engine is an automatic transmission and it has a few other things that aren't CAN bus that I can't control. Uh, I'm just gonna pass through those signals and let them stay connected so that I don't lose any functionality in the car. All I need to do is take over the injectors and the ignition coils and then tap into like the crank position sensor, uh, power ground, a couple other things like that, throttle position, or yeah, throttle position output, just the voltage output from that, and we'll be ready to go. So, um, I'm going to do a whole series of videos on this. Uh, this is just kind of the beginning. I wanted to show what uh, is possible running a, a small ECU like this where you don't need a lot of I.O. because you're already using uh, a factory ECU that would otherwise take up that I.O. from your ECU. So, let me... Uh, let me uh, put together some more of my videos. I'm working on this uh, kind of in chunks and just stay tuned and I'll get you guys some more content on how this goes together. So once I finish up my adapter, you can see right here, it's totally not finished. Um, I don't really wanna focus on this as much. I might make a separate video on how that is made, but once I get this set up, I will branch this out, cut it up so it's shorter in length because it only needs to be about a foot long and then uh, once that's ready, I'm gonna show you the whole process of putting it in the vehicle, uh, checking for continuity on everything before I power it on to the ECU to make sure that we don't hurt any electronics, there's nothing that was wired incorrectly, and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and tune it, and uh, that's gonna be probably the funnest part of all of it, I think. So if you enjoy content like this, you wanna learn a little bit more about this, uh, consider subscribing and uh, leaving a comment, like, and or uh, joining the channel to try to support us a little bit more so we can do more cool stuff like this in the future. All right, thank you, enjoy.